Hello friends, welcome to Village Idiots Christ for Nuts for Jesus and Just Plain Nuts. <laughs> for out of our mind is for the sake of God, for in our right mind is for your sake. These are twisted tales from a village idiot, understanding the Bible through humor and sanity and common sense. Amen. Well, it's been a while and I do apologize. We've lost this last, we lost this last week. A uh, week ago, yesterday, we were headed down to... Um, uh, from from Kentucky down to Atlanta, see my brother in the hospital again, going through real hell again, and really hard times. And so, we got we were in hotels and everything, and then we had to we were over. Now we're in Georgia, at my brother's house, helping them get their house ready for sale. So it has been just the last eight days have been insane. So I do apologize. The last video I made was nine days ago. So I try to be consistent. I really am, but having a heck of a time being consistent just life just keeps changing so i know you all know what i'm talking about so we are we're just going to start out we're starting a clean slate here revelation chapter two we left off at one so two eh. and now we're going to go through um let me give you the books i'll give them to you in order just so you know what, where we're headed tomorrow and the next day i want to get this i'm trying to get consistent on this so uh revelation ecclesiastes uh, John, Romans, Psalms, Matthew, and Jeremiah. So, and Proverbs will be when we finish Ecclesiastes, problems will be after that. Amen. So, Revelation chapter 2, let's jump on in. Sorry about the long introduction. There you go. This is chapter 2 to the church in Ephesus. And again, these are the seven churches. They're all in Turkey. And if you look in the order here, that's the order John would have gone when he went to them. This order, the given, was the same order, and, you know, as far as proximity goes, he would have gone and visited. So let's just jump in. Yeah. There's a pretty long, this kind of covers uh, one, two, three, four churches in chapter two. So, so there's quite a bit of information here. So we're two minutes in. Let's, I'm going to try and keep it at 15 or 20 if we can. So the angel of the church, again, these letters were written to each of these churches. Amen. So the angel of the church in Ephesus right. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. That's Jesus Christ, of course. See that in chapter 1. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have uh, tested those who claim to be apostles and are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardship for my name and not grown and have not grown weary. Now, this is the pattern. He always compliments first. He always said, by the way, you're getting this, 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 and this right. And that's what he was saying here. He said, but then he goes into, we'll call it constructive criticism or correction. Okay. Yet I hold this against you. Verse four, you have forsaken your first love. Consider the heights from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and you remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let's stop there for a second. So again, they had fallen out of love with Jesus. They had lost that first love, that romantic honeymoon kind of love for Christ, which we're supposed to have and supposed to maintain if possible. But they had lost that first love for Christ. And uh, he said, and it talks about how far they had fallen. Love a love relationship with your creator is all important. A love relationship with with each other is all important. But a love relationship with your creator, God, is more important. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you, as you, as you, as you love yourself. And so they, they were falling out of love with Jesus. Amen. Um, let's continue on verse 7. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit says to the church. The Spirit is always speaking to us individually as a church and corporately as the church. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Isn't that a good scripture? Amen. You want to be victorious, don't you? I know I do. Amen. Uh, let's continue on here. Uh, the, now we have to the next church. Uh, to the church, um, uh, to the church in Smyrna, to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. 
I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you're about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the the crown of the. I will give you the crown of life. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. So, no criticism at all. None whatsoever. Only praise he gives this church. And I won't get into all that. If you want to read that, that's verses uh, 8, uh, eight, through, uh, 8 through 11. And, uh, but it's encouraging because they, they needed no correction. None. So he didn't correct them. Amen. Uh, to the church in Pergamum, right. To the angel of the church in Pergamum, right. These are the words of him who has sharp uh, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city. Uh, Amen. Where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Uh, these, There are those among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites um, uh, to sin so they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual morality. Likewise, you have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Let's stop there for a second. So again, uh, the Church of Pergamum, um, he... It's it's interesting. These are the words who has sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Isn't that an interesting footnote from Christ? Yet you remain true to my name. So even they're living right in the middle of where Satan lives, they still remain true to his name. You do not renounce your faith, but even not in days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. So they remain faithful even with Antipas who was put to death in their city. And then again, then correction. Uh, this is the third church. Second and sixth churches have no correction. Uh, again, these are minor you know, in detail. Uh, Nevertheless, I have few things against you. There are those among you who hold the teaching of Balaam who taught uh, Balaam to taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so they ate food and sacrificed to idols. Again, um, he's um, he he's just giving them a little warning here. And the Nicolaitans, I'm not sure who they were, and they're mentioned in the first church as well. So uh, there was a lot of perversity, a lot of uh, bizarre sexual church stuff going on. It was a really weird time. Temple prostitution was having sex to be holy, and so there were some really strange practices going on. Um, let's continue on here. Verse 17, whoever hears here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I'll give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that. You also give him a new name. Uh, I'll give him a stone with a new name written on it that no one can know but he himself. Amen. Amen. Uh, and again, <laughs> I have the ears here. Let me hear what the Spirit says to the church. The one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I love that. I will give. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it. Only to the one who receives it, you're gonna get a stone with a new name, and uh, you're the only one that's gonna know what that is. Isn't that cool? There's some just some cool stuff in these books. This revelation is just endlessly fascinating to me. I love it. And let's let's finish out here in Thyatira. I I apologize. I'm a little choppy here today. I'm I'm tired. It was a busy busy day today. A good day, but a busy day. So the angel of church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and whose feet are like burnished rods. Chapter 1. I know your deeds, that your love and faith, and your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. So they um, so they uh, had uh, they, they had deeds, they had love, they had faith, they had service, they had perseverance. And... <laughs> Two more days. Nevertheless, I, but they had this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual morality and eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I'll cast her on a bed of suffering and I'll make those who commit adultery with her suffer intentionally unless they repent of her ways. So the church had this woman Jezebel 
who was 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 luring people into both uh, food sacrifice to idols and sexual morality, and she was and she was serving in the church, you know, thinking she's uh, doing the right thing here. It's amazing how blind she is. Uh, let's see, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike I will strike her children dead. Then all the church will know that I am he that searches hearts and minds, and I will pay each of you according to these. You can't fool God. He searches your heart, he searches your mind. You guard your heart with all your with, with all diligence for it's the wellspring of life. Everything the, all the issues of your life are going through your heart. And they're proceeding through your mind and through your heart. You want to guard your mind, guard your heart with all diligence, protect yourself from the schemes of the enemy. Absolutely. You want to do that. Amen. Now I say to the rest of you, entire terror of those who do not hold their teaching, have not learned Satan's so-called deep. Don't you, they? They've learned so-called Satan's so-called deep secrets. Man, he's 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 repackaging the same bill of goods he's always repackaged. <laughs> he's the ultimate recycler. I will not impose any other burden on you except hold on to what you you have until I come. So we're supposed to hold on till the Lord comes. So the one who is victorious and does my will and now will give authority to the nations. Pretty cool, amen. That one will rule over them with an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give them the morning star. Cool, 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 cool stuff there. I will also give them the morning star. Uh, I will also... Let's see. Um... The one is victorious and does my will to the end. I will give authority over the nations. That will the, they will they will rule them with an iron scepter. Will dash them to peace like pottery. Just as I receive authority from my father. I also I also I will also give them the morning star, whatever that means. But if Jesus sends you the morning star, whatever it is, you take it. Amen. Whoever has ears here, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Praise the Lord. Again, sorry about the choppiness there. I am tired. It was a very busy day. A lot of physical labor today. I'm good physical labor. I feel, feel good, feel strong, but I'm just, I'm whooped out. I'm sitting on a couch that sucks all the life out of me. Anyway, it's good to see you again. Sorry, sorry it's been about eight, nine days. I apologize. My brother's going through a lot of cancer hell. Just pray for him. Pray that the, he'll be able to get permanent drainage and that um, that he will, you can just pray for his healing. Amen. He's a miracle already, so just keep praying for him. Anyway, love you, love you, can't get enough of you, and we will see you tomorrow. We appreciate you and we love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow.